The purpose of this interview is to provide um, a pastor's view on abortion. Um, this is Reverend Jonathan Malone from First Baptist Church in East Greenwich. <laughs> what are some of your views on abortion? Abortion's a, 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 a tricky a, a tricky subject because I don't think it's something you can look at black and white. I don't think it's either you're, you're completely for it or completely against it. It's it, it can it's very contextual. Um, obviously, you want to feel like you want to say that all life is sacred. Um, you want to support that, but there are some situations where you, people are forced into making difficult decisions. Uh, my my feeling on, on abortion, I think, goes beyond just whether or not it's a woman's right to choose um, or, or or protecting the life of, of the fetus or the baby, but, but goes beyond to how has, it, has society gotten to a place where it can help the woman, the child, so that the choice doesn't have to be made. So you believe that life is sacred? Well, yeah, I mean, life's sacred, but not... When you say that life is sacred, it's, it's a very... <laughs> encompassing idea. Uh, there was a great um, a great speaker and, and thinker, Car Cardinal Bernadine, he was the cardinal in Chicago, and he talked about the sacred garment of life, and he said, life's sacred from the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. You know, so if we're going to say life is sacred, then yes, we should do what we can to take care of the infants and, and such, but then we should do what we can to take care of people as they're growing, and health care, um, helping to get good jobs, earn a living wage, job protection, an end of life as well, taking care of people at the end of life. Um, if I say life is sacred, then it's really hard for me to uh, justify the death penalty. Um, it's hard for me to justify war if I say life is sacred, and I do say life is sacred. Uh, so, And this is a critique I have of, of folks that tend to be pro-life. They say pro-life, but, you know, but they don't seem to carry it through to consistently through all the stages of life. Are there any situations or circumstances in which you believe abortion is acceptable? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's ever acceptable, but sometimes it's the only option. Um, I disagree. Like the Catholic Church would, would is st states that if the woman's life is in danger and the, and the infant's life is in danger, take care of the infant at the expense of the mother. You know, that, and there I don't know if I could agree with that. I mean, what if she's a mother and she has like four other kids at home? You know, what happens to those four other kids if, if their mother dies and they have a new sibling that's, you know, great for them, but they don't have a mother anymore? That's not great. Um, you know, sometimes if it's, you know, obviously like rape and incest, how can, who am I to say if, if, that, if that's a good situation? Um, so there's medical issues. There's also ethical issues. There's um, issues of, you know, trauma involved. So, you know, I, I don't think it's ever acceptable, but sometimes it's the difficult decision that people have to make. So would you say that you are pro-choice? If I have to be pigeonholed, and I don't like being <laughs> pigeonholed, <laughs> um, I do tend to lean more towards pro-choice. But the reason really is, you know, I would rather not have any, any abortions. You know, I, I guess I would say I'm pro-choice but anti-abortion, if I can make that claim. But I don't think our society has gotten to a place where we make it possible for people to be anti-abortion. Uh, you know, there are some some people are just you know some some women are are in situations where having a child would make their life impossible um, because of job, because of lack of family support, lack of community support. You know, the church is supposed to be there to support them. We're supposed to be a community that helps, um, and churches aren't doing it, and society isn't doing it. Um, so. You know, we're in a bad situation. And so in a bad situation, you have to make bad choices. So as, as a pastor, I call the church. I'm, I'm not calling our church to be pro-choice or, or pro-life. That's not appropriate. I'm calling our church to be um, the work to make our world a better place. What is the basis for your, for your views? I, Jesus talks about the kingdom of God. Um, it's, you know, in, in the Gospels, he, he talks about the kingdom of God, a time, a place of of rejoicing, a time, a place where the meek are, are blessed, where the peacemakers are blessed, where people are, are really cherished as individuals. 
Uh, that's the basis. You know, that's what we're working towards. In the kingdom of God, we won't have to have a question of abortion. You won't have to have abortions in the kingdom of God. It is that perfect society that we're working towards. Uh, and when Jesus returns, that kingdom will come. Uh, but I don't think we should just sit by and wait. I mean, that's, we got to keep working towards it. You know, I'm telling people about it, working to make it happen, um, so that you know maybe, maybe by before Jesus returns, we can have a society where just abortions aren't necessary. So the kingdom of God, Scripture path. I mean, read Matthew, read Luke, read Mark. Yeah, there, it's in there. <laughs> um. So, do you believe that a fetus has a conscience, and that they, conscience, I mean, and that they deserve to live because they are a human being as well, even if they aren't fully developed? <laughs> the question of when does life begin, right? Yes. Do I believe that a fetus has a conscience? Well, I, you know, I, bad word, but. well, yeah, I mean, that, if you want to use Greek philosophy, then let's talk about the conscience. Uh, if we want to talk about the potential of life beginning and come from a Hebraic point of view, from my understanding, um, that's a different that's a different place of going. That's you know, and that's where you would say you know, even even you know, the, even the, a male sperm is sacred, and you shouldn't waste that. Um, do we want to go that far? Uh, you know, and that's you know, I don't know if, if that's if that's the case or not. You can say when you hear a heartbeat, that's when life begins. You know. I, I don't know um, if that's if that is the case. Um, you know, I would I would like to I, I like the idea of trimesters and anything after the second trimester shouldn't be. You know, you can't you know third trimester abortions. That seems like you know by the third trimester the child can live on their own um, outside of the mother. That that's a good indication that probably that that child is a person. Uh, first trimester, second trimester. I just don't know enough. And then questions about consciousness or questions about potential, this person, who could this person be? Those are questions that can lead you down a slope of, you know, to a point where you say, you know, even if, you know, if someone just has the act of sex, there's a potential of having a child, so we shouldn't even block that potential of that having a child, so we shouldn't have birth control. Do we want to go that, down that path? You know, again, that's Catholicism has gone down that path. Most Protestants tend not to. So some evangelical, charismatic, you know, conservative Christians tend to say, are now, some are saying that, yeah, we shouldn't have birth control because we're getting in the way of God's plan. You know, that's, right now I lean on towards birth control and, and trust that God has a plan that can work around our, you know, simple uses. I think that's, that's it? Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Let's turn it off. <laughs>